Hey everyone, got a really cool tutorial for you here. Today I want to talk to you about the Roto Brush tool in Adobe After Effects. Now, the reason I want to make a tutorial about this is because I think it deserves a tutorial. This tool is pretty cool once you figure out how to use it, but the problem is figuring out how to use it because it's quite, it's not the most intuitive process. So I want to take you through the steps here. But first, let's talk about rotoscoping. So what exactly is rotoscoping? Well, rotoscoping is when you go through and isolate a section of your frame and you kind of tear it apart. You're isolating kind of a foreground from a background. In this example, I'm gonna be taking my head here. This is me kind of rocking out my beat. Beats headphones here is kind of awkward. Uh, but I'm gonna isolate myself from the background here and that way I'll be able to edit my head individually from the background and it opens it up to a variety of different visual effects, effects options and I'll show you those by the end of this. You'll see just what we can do with this method which is extremely cool. The Rotobrush tool is located up here and there's actually two tools. You have the Rotobrush tool and you have the Refine Edge tool. We'll be using both of these. And the shortcut key is Option W. So I'm gonna select the Rotobrush tool and then to actually use it, I need to open up my layer in the layer panel. So to do that, I'll just select my layer down here in the timeline, double click. And now I have the correct layout here. Think of the Rotobrush tool like the quick selection tool in Adobe Photoshop. And the only difference being obviously we're working in video so we're going to be working with a huge number of images when compared to with Photoshop where you're just working with one single image. So for instance I have a four second clip here at 24 frames per second well that's how many images I'm going to need to edit basically 24 times 4. Okay the first thing I want to do is adjust my brush size and I can do that by holding the command key and then simply clicking and dragging up and down that will resize this. And now to add to my selection I can just start to drag the brush over and now you'll see this little outline here, this little pink line, that is our selection here. Now there's a few different ways we can view our selection. If you go down here you can toggle the alpha, you can look at this outline here or you can look at an overlay and then you can adjust the color of the overlay and the opacity if you want. We'll go back here and if you look here you can see that we our selection isn't perfect. So to to delete this, I'm going to hold the Alt key. And you can see now we can subtract from our selection, just as in with Photoshop. So I'm going to lower the size of this. I'm going to hold Alt, and there we go. Okay, so our selection is kind of roughed in. It's looking good. That didn't take any time at all. So now I want to go through and refine the edges. So I'm going to grab that Refine Edge tool, and now I'm going to just go through here. I'm going to reposition here. Now I'm just going to go through start to grab these edges. Now this tool is going to help a lot where there's a lot of detail and mainly with you know the hair, the beard hair, the hair on my head this is going to help quite a bit. But I'm going to go ahead and use this on all of the edges. You know it's it's good for for difficult edges but I'm going to go ahead and just apply this to every edge I have here. Okay there we go we have our edges all set. Let's go ahead and toggle that off and now we're ready to go. But first we need to understand our workspace here. Now we have our views as I explained before. Now what we just created here is our base frame. This is our first selection, our first image. And you can see it here. We can see our selection, our four seconds here that's in our comp. Now we can see the actual base frame here. And it's inside what we call a span, this little gray selection here. Now you work outward from the base frame. So we're gonna basically go frame by frame from this base frame. And I need to extend my span here so that will, it will allow us to use the roto brush in, the, in these areas. I'm going to expand it all the way to our selection. Now I could go through and add multiple base lay or base frames, and then use those. They all come with their own span, but I'm just going to work from the one because this is a short enough four second clip. So now I'm going to go frame by frame from our base frame and just basically keep an eye on the selection with each frame. I'll figure out if I need to make adjustments or not. And I'm going to switch back from the Refine Edge tool to my to my Roto Brush. Okay, and to move frame by frame, I can use the page up and page down. So I'm going to go first, I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to go backward with a page up. Now I'm going to hit page up. Now I'm just going to keep an eye. Go in one frame, two frame. Looks like we might have a problem here and here. Okay, this is good, but we're having an issue up here. I'm going to zoom in. Look, yeah, we're having an issue right here. So I'm going to resize this, hold Alt, kind of refine that. This is pretty processor intensive, so that's why it's just not hanging like it should. Okay, we're good there. Now we're going to go another frame, 
looking good. I'm telling you, this tool is really cool. It saves you a lot of time. We're having another issue here. Hold Alt, Refine. Okay, looking good. Page up. And look down here, you can see that this is rendering or processing and we can still see our base frame. And we're having another issue here. This is giving us some issues. Okay, looking good. Page up, page up. As you'll see in a second, you don't have to go frame by frame. You can actually jump ahead and go, I could just essentially drag my cursor all the way and it would render it. But the problem is if it drifts and there's any problems, we can't just fix it at that location. We have to fix it where it first started drifting because it'll propagate, for, it propagates outward from the base frame. So if you have a problem, all those frames are gonna have a problem. You need to go back and basically re-render and re-tweak -re everything. Okay, so this is all looking good. And I'm gonna go back to my base frame and now I'm gonna start using page down to refine in the opposite direction. And again, doing the same process, just watching my edges here keeping an eye out, watching here. Okay, we're having a problem here. Now, one of the areas you'll notice is where, you have a, where you'll have a lot of problems is when you have low contrast. You'll notice the color of my headphones are similar to this color, so that's why it's giving us, giving us trouble. And you'll learn, after you rotoscope once or twice, you'll learn a couple of lessons for shooting, how to shoot, like you shoot with high contrast, you shoot with a high shutter speed. You don't want, uh, motion blur is another thing that will really mess up your, uh, if you go and try to rotoscope something that's that's all blurry, it's extremely hard. Okay, there we go, page down. Okay, that's looking good now. Now that that's clear of the edge, I'm gonna hold shift and hit page down so it jumps ahead 10 frames and let's see what happens. Let's see, um, we're gonna have to let it process. You'll see it's growing there and it's processing. So we'll see if our selection held up and if we'll need to go back and refine it at all. Okay, it's looking good, and there's some little bit of action going on here, but nothing too bad. So now I'm just going to jump, shift page down. I'm going to jump by 10 frames. You can see I just need to go all the way to the end here. Okay, everything's looking good. I can quickly view it in whatever view I'd like. If I'd like to view just the mat here, I can view that. So this is looking pretty good. We have some issues up here, a little bit of issue here, but everything's looking good for right now, especially that beard. Look at the beard. I mean, the beard's good in the first place, but that, that alpha mat is really good. Okay, so now I can go back and I can freeze this, which is basically gonna save it. And if we accidentally make any changes later, it would mess it up. So this, this is gonna save us. Okay, so we're all finished with our rotoscope. Now to see what we created, let's go back to our composition panel. Now you can see that our alpha is there, our, our element is isolated. So now what exactly can we do with this? Well, if we wanna make any further adjustments, you can see in the effect controls panel here, we have all of our roto brush uh, tools, uh, our options here. So if we can fine tune this even further, but let me show you some of the creative things we can do. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna duplicate my layer then I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'm gonna delete the effect on that clip. So now we have our background back. Now we can essentially edit these separately. We can edit our foreground from the background or we can place objects in between it. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I have, uh, actually I already have this one here. I have this text here. I can drag this between. So now I can actually put graphic elements in between those two layers. That's one thing we could do. Or I can edit these two separately. So let's, so let's say I want to do some color correction. I can add a curves effect to my background. I could like bring, I can darken the background. See, so check that out. I can even add a curves to my isolated one. I could change the brightness of that. I could desaturate the background if I want. Or check this out, I can add a blur effect to the background and I could create like this fake depth of field illusion. It's very cool. So the options are only kind of limited by your creativity. You can go pretty crazy with this method and, and create some cool stuff. In fact, if you create something with this method, please send me a link in the comment section. I'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It was really fun to make. If you liked it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with your friends. And now the most important part, go rotoscope something.